everybody, my name's Kara on Fire and welcome to Small Land. Today we're going to be looking at some of my advanced tips in the game for you. So let's get right into it. Now I initially thought this was a thing everybody knew, but apparently it wasn't because I had tons of people telling me that they didn't know that this was a thing. Anyway, are you tired of picking up items one by one? Well, you actually don't have to. If you hold down your interact key, you don't even have to be looking at it. Just close by, you can pick items up. So. That should make picking up lots of items easier. In this game, you can totally avoid the crafting cost of any item as long as you repair it quickly and don't leave it too late. The best way to do this is not let it go past half health and durability. So what I mean by this, if you've been using your hatchets and whatever, you'll see if you go over it, it says items slightly damaged, only basic maintenance required, so it costs nothing. So if you make sure it doesn't go past that halfway point, you'll be able to repair your gear and never ever have to spend anything in repair costs. So it might be a good idea to have the ingredients for a workbench on you to be able to repair when you're out or if you're going to do a boss or something and you repair straight afterwards. Or I would highly recommend this if you're farming. So if you make sure you have those bits on you, you can just keep putting down the work table, repairing yourself to the point that you never have to use costs to repair your armor and weapons again. Another good thing in the game is fast traveling. So say I'm down here on the beach. My bed's all the way up there by the spawn point, but I don't want to run all the way up there. If you are in a lobby where you can just restart it, you can actually fast travel. So watch me right now. I'm going to quit, confirm, I'm going to go back to menu. Now I'm back in menu, I'm going to go straight ahead and load my game once again. So we we'll start that world back up again and see where I end up now. You should fast travel right on top of your bed where you last claimed your spawn. So you should go all the way back there and this will happen with your mounts as well so you see i spawned right back at my spawn my mounts with me and i've went from there to there so if you ever do go on a trip or farming or anything like that just make sure your bed is back at home or somewhere close by which is safe and you can technically well just fast travel anywhere you like as long as you reload the game because you'll go straight back to your bed so yep, that's a really good tip I would highly recommend. Stacking chests, another comment I've had quite a bit over the time. How do you stack chests? Well, you can do this with pretty much any chest. I do have a bit of trouble with the iron chest, but the first two are really simple to do. So you need it close to a wall, and then you need to use the wall to kind of stack it and support it to go on top of the chest. And then you can get some really neat storage just like this. My favourite one are the wooden ones if I'm honest, they look the best stacked and they're just so nice together so they also are a lot easier to place so just pop it against the wall, use the wall as support and then the iron chest. Like I was saying the iron chest does give me a bit of trouble but I'm sure there's a way you can stack it, you probably need a double wall or something like that it's a little bit harder but for now if you can't get that to work you can always use a wall to separate it and don't snap it so get a random ceiling any kind however you like and use that to put your iron chest on top and of course put it a lot neater than i have but this is another way you could go about stacking your chests up especially for the bigger kinds Sorrel broth is probably one of my favourite foods in the game. Not only is it incredibly easy to make, it is great for the winter time with its cold protection. It gives good healing, it blocks nourishment loss, and it gives quite a lot of nourishment as well. The only ingredient you might be confused on is sorrel, and to be honest, sorrel could be found all over the beaches. It looks like this with the leaves and the kind of reddish tint to them. And they're usually found in clusters like the one you're seeing right now. And then if you farm some of the sorrel up, and go back home to your cauldron i'll teach you how to cook it once you're home access the cauldron and we're looking to make sorrel broth now the reason why this is so good it only takes insect fat bug lymph and leaves which are from the sorrel little bush things we just found on the beach they're all really easy to get in comparison to any of the other stews most bugs will give you insect fat you know hands down so it's really good stuff. You could also make the fade chowder, which is also pretty solid, but it does rely on you killing beetles for the most part. But apart from that, compared to anything else, I think it's probably one of the best things you can make and one of the easiest things you can make in comparison to some of the other stuff that have the same 
bonuses such as the spider stew but it's a lot harder to get the stuff to make the spider stew and they do give you the same things so I 100% recommend sorrel broth it's the best food in the game in my uh, opinion because just because of its easiness to make loads of it when it comes to armor you're not stuck to one set aka I mix and matching which I honestly think is the best thing to do in this game don't just go with one set like everybody else if we look in our codex we can look at some of the armors we can make from some of the best people and compare them against each other so the bone helmet are seven sixes or six sixes so you can see mostly six sixes all around minus the chest plate and they give different buffs and have different durabilities so in theory if you want different resistances and different stats you can switch and match with other things this includes the healing mask which you could always use some bits of this armor to deal with poison and they will help heal you but it doesn't mean you have to wear all the entire set sure it'll be the most efficient if you wore the healer set all together but you can mix and match it and to be honest most of the time you're going to want wings so you're either going to want to have the regal plate or you'll want to have the iron wing breastplate on so you can glide and fly because it's seriously good for this game and the iron wing breastplate gives some of the best protection that you can get even better than the bone plating for the chest plate so definitely 100% worth it however the cold protection is not amazing and that goes around for the whole set the cold protection on the set is not amazing and it is edge resistance so if you wanted a bit more cold protection you would vi like go for the bone stuff as well as the iron wing so there you go you can mix and match things and this goes for the entire game really depending on what you want to wear mix and match it to suit you and in some counters it might help you more even if you have some of the silk weaver stuff and put it on with some of the other stuff you're going to get a little bit of movement speed there and some piercing resistance so yeah make sure you mix and match your items because i think this is going to help you out are you scared of spiders but you need silk well look for this little fence right here next to a tree next to another fence post and we're going to go down to the sandra to get silk now you will see little friendly spiders down here but they are friendly so they won't attack you so if you want the easiest silk to get with the least spider exposure of them trying to kill you then uh, yeah come down this way let me just speed run down there for you Now we've made it to Lysandra's cave, you can come in here, there are three friendly spiders as long as you don't hit them, they're absolutely fine, they just stare at you, okay? You can go ahead and farm the spider cocoons in here, there's absolutely tons and you can get loads of silk from here. You're in a safe space, you won't get bothered and you can get that silk that you absolutely need. So loads of cocoons in here as you can see, a few tiny friendly spiders that are not going to bother you as long as you don't bother them. And that's probably the easiest, least spider, spider exposure way you can go about getting silk. So we ended up here on the map. There is one little intersection you go by where the little branches are lent over. As long as you stick to the route I was on, you won't risk coming across a big spider. So, yep, I hope that helps you. Want to know how to get one of the best spears in the game early on in stone armor? Well, you can absolutely do so just make sure you have stuff for beds we are coming to the greylands and we're coming to the place with all the sewers and the metal and the flint and all that hornets and cockroaches which hopefully we're going to avoid make sure you're extra vigilant to avoid those before you go down there so watch the pathing and watch them walk away and you want to go down like a little tube that looks like this so we're going to jump on the log and go down the hole and doing this will give us a poison spear with one of the best damages in the game for spears in general it'll give you a huge boost early on and you won't have to make any other spear if you want a better spear because it is pretty much the best spear in the game so you can have a really solid spear really really early on so we're going down the grates it's a bit scary going down and uh, we're probably going to die a couple of times that's fine but that's what the beds are for and make sure you have a weapon in your hand when you do die and that will help cause uh, a lot less trouble anyway i'm gonna speed up through this bit because i'm gonna teach you how to go in 
get it, go out. I'm going to include all my deaths and my methods. So there you go. The way with the spider webs is the way out. And the way further down is the way you go if you want to get the spear. There is a cockroach in the way, but wait for him to go on the side of the wall and you can avoid him entirely. This next room has lights and grey fly. The grey fly will most likely kill you because there are so many. But if you have a sword to deal with them, like a flint one or something like that, something garbage, uh, you'll easily deal with them. So just make sure the cockroach is on the other side of the wall again. It will path there eventually, just watch it do its thing. And then you can go up there and totally avoid the thing. So just be a bit patient with it, your gravestone isn't going anywhere. So once you've done that, maybe kill a few of the grey flies off with a powerful attack. They are very annoying. I think I died here a couple of times, but apart from that I just respawned close by and kept going. And that's all it really takes really, it's not really bothersome to get this at all. As long as you stay calm and uh, do what you need to do, you can get one of the best spears early in the game. And that's it, I've got all the stuff healing up, happy days, and we're going to move on to the way of getting out. Now how you get out is a lot harder than how you get in, honestly. But you can make it easy, but you have to watch how things move around and everything. And if you do have something to chase you, like I'm getting chased by this cockroach, if you go past a certain point in the sewers on the rings, they don't follow you anymore. So it's the same with the spiders, same with the cockroach, same with pretty much everything. So if you want to keep running, do. This next bit with the webs has spiders. I'm waiting for the uh, widow to go on the right hand side. So I can slip around the left and not aggro it. So you can see here I've gone around and I've totally avoided the spider. So no problem. But there is grey flies on the other side. And they are very mean. But thankfully I got a bed down there. So now I've avoided the spider spot. And I can just take out the rest of the grey fly. And heal up. And then I can uh, move on. We're looking for our way out. Which is straight ahead where the water is. So we're going to aim for that direction. And once we've got rid of the rest of these grey flies from our, our way, we can heal up and uh, move along that way and get out. And then what we're going to want to do from there is we're going to want to go up the right hand side a bit so we avoid these uh, ants, which they're fine, they're not really hurting at all. You can go up the concrete, avoid the cockroaches, uh, if you go all the way up and around the long way, like the bushes, you can avoid all the hornets and the cockroaches and the ants. You can avoid pretty much everything. You go by the log by the bin and then you're going further up. And this bit's really easy now, but if you're worried to put a bed back down so you don't end up back down the sewers. And then this bit, yeah, really simple. Just go across the concrete. It's a bit you can jump across. Maybe a, full, a few bull ants might get in the way. But yeah, jump across the concrete as long as there's no cockroaches there. And you're pretty much back where you started, but you have a brand new spanking spear on your hands that you don't have to make yourself. Yep, that is my best kind of guide on how to get that. It took me probably, I don't know, 10-15 minutes to do the whole excursion, maybe less time. But I got a Kraken spear that has poison damage, which will do damage over time. It's great for the Sawyer bugs, the bees, anything like that that takes pierce damage. Make sure you do that. But anyway, I hope this video helped you today. Thank you for watching, I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.